we've asked students, faculty, and community members to tell us what the collection means to them. My name is Marie Leverett. I'm the Program and Graduate Chair for Women's and Gender Studies at the University of Saskatchewan. You know, when I think about this collection, there's a memory that leaps to mind for me of Neil Richards. And we had asked him to come and speak to a group of undergraduate students talking about the importance of the archive as a site for really engaging with the uh, histories that too often get erased. And Neil told a personal story that was so moving to me. He talked about, you know, growing up and the only place you could go when he was a boy to find any kind of information about queer culture, which wasn't called queer culture then, uh, was at the library. And in fact, a lot of the stuff he could find was phobic. <laughs> and he remembers some of those early reports on sexuality and how important it was to hold in his hands some kind of affirmation that was completely absent from the educational environment, from the community. And I just remember those students being absolutely riveted and totally getting it, like how knowledge politics works in such a way that minoritized groups, including queer communities, are like the record is in somebody's private photo album. It's in, you know, their closet and you know and I don't mean the you know the hidden closet I mean you know like what they were wearing at the time or it's in a collection of newspaper clippings or just in the lived experience of showing up for the pride parades and you know the protests <laughs> When I first came here, one of the things I did was travel study programming to New York City. And so we would study Saskatoon as a space of remembering and forgetting all of the diversities that are represented in our uh, community. And then we would go to New York and study the same thing. And so, of course, one of the places we always came was here. And, um, you know, students would take what they learned about collecting archives and um, using them into other archival spaces. And one of the things we talked about was how Neil chose to put this archive here and how different that is from the decision that was made by the Lesbian Herstory Archives in New York. They were offered space in that big, beautiful Fifth Avenue library with the lions that everybody knows the pictures of, right? And they declined because they knew that it was so easy for those sort of private kind of public institutions to decommission minoritized collections. And when they set up their archive, like Neil's, you know, it was an archive that included gray matter, it included material objects. Uh, so here uh, behind me, you can see the collection of buttons. Uh, that an Anglican priest developed over the course of years and years and years of being part of movements uh, that he was involved in. Well, you know, you can go to the Lesbian History Archives and again, yes, there's books, yes, there's papers, yes, there's private papers, but there's also t-shirts and, you know, uh, pulp fiction collections and all these wonderful things. So anyway, um, so our students would use it that way. One of the things that was really clear to all of us is that this collection belongs to the community. We want the community contributing to it and it belongs to the community. So we created this whole project out of the Interdisciplinary Center for Culture and Creativity where we had this tiny little pot of money and we created a kind of granting system. And so we asked for community interveners to propose uses of the archive, and they did the most fabulous work. These projects were all about getting the community into the archive and mobilizing it because this is a living archive. And connecting up with those stories 
and those histories is such an important part. I know you've spoken with Rachel Owen Walker, who was an undergraduate student when I met her and uh, wanted a course with the word queer in the title on her transcript. And I said, well, yeah, why don't we have that now? And so we built it and then uh, created it um, for uh, second year undergraduates. So Rachel did it as a fourth year capstone, but then we made it sort of uh, appropriate for a second year class. The truth is that all of the minoritized knowledge classes that we do are actually pitched high, right? Because there's so much to cover. But anyway, uh, according to Train's been very popular and Rachel eventually came back and taught it. Um, and as a result of that, uh, we now have um, uh, interdisciplinary certificate in queer theory, gender diversity, and sexuality studies that draws together the courses that were made at various times um, in uh, participating arts and science uh, college units. And it's, you know, the students were taking that certificate before it was ever made, right? And so we're so happy to have that. Gaps occur in part because people need to recognize that what they have as a record of the community is valuable. So, you know, we certainly could grow uh, the lesbian and trans parts of this um, archive. I think the Two-Spirit archive, you know, I think about it 100 years from now, it's just going to be so rich. Um, you know, I'm thinking about also, um, you know, the ways that, you know, when Neil told that story about being a, a young, you know, tween uh, in the library, trying to find a record of himself. And then I think about how cultures have changed around children and education. I mean, we need a record of that. When we made, I have to say, I have to just jump back and say, when we made Curing the Train, I remember Neil, like, phoning me up and saying, I want that syllabus, <laughs> right? And he did that for everything we did, right? I want that in the archive, right? And so it became just part of, you know, being in women's and gender studies and all of the other fields was to make sure Neil got, um, you know, the record. I love the work that Valerie Kornick has done using this archive. I remember when Neil passed away, Valerie was speaking at uh, the memorial service and talked about how Prairie Fairies was, was such, um, you know, such a partnership uh, with Neil. And I remember us standing on the riverbank singing, we are gentle, angry people for him. The day in, day out, contributions that people make just by honoring minoritized knowledges like Neil did, like Valerie does, like Trish did, like all of those community interveners, um, you know, they really do make the horizons of possibility for everyone bigger.